So this card is all, this card is going to be a good example of, um, let's just play with it. The force of P is applied, 60, 60 kilogram card determine the reaction of both wheels A. So we need the reactions here and here. So that's going to be our focus. All right. What is acceleration of the cart? Um, so we need three things. A, A, B, and acceleration. Central mass is at G. Dope. So I'm just going to draw the free body diagram directly on the cart and then draw the kinetic um, to the left. So note that the center of mass is actually not in the center of the cart, which is cool. So we're going to put mass times gravity here, which is about 600. Then we're going to put a normal force here, normal of B, and the normal of A. Because the B and the A are not symmetric, they're not going to be the same. I assure you. Make some sense? Mm -hmm. I assure you they're not the same. And this is going to be 300 happening here. And then um, now this part tricks this part trips me up. When you put that like that, a lot of students start to say, "What about the friction? What about the friction happening on the wheels?" I'm gonna tell you like this: Don't put the friction on this problem. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Think of it like this: This p, that x value, is gonna be the reason why this cart moves. Okay. If you put a friction pointing backward, they don't tell you anything about the normal friction or this uh, or the kinetic friction in this bad boy. And so that means that you'd have to solve for friction. There are ways where you could solve for friction. However, to solve for friction, you'd have to look at the wheel on its own. Does that make some sense? The wheel isolated from the body. Yeah. If you look at the wheel isolated from the body, this is what's going to happen. You're going to need to know the mass times acceleration, which came from the block itself. So that's what you have to put in there. And using that, you would have to solve for the force of friction. Does that make some sense? Yeah. And so what happens is, and I remember I learned this and I hated this. What happens is you're not looking at the wheel. And so you're not looking at this friction. Is that friction there in real life? Of course it is. But in this problem, you're not focused on that. In this problem, you're focused on the actual block. Does that make some sense? Yeah. So... That right there pissed me off to no end. So basically what I tell students is if you have a car or a cart and you want to consider the acceleration of the car or the cart, then you're not going to actually look at the friction on the wheels unless they say to look at the friction on the wheels. Does that make some sense? They'll explicitly start to talk to you about like what's happening to the wheels. If that's not the case, then you don't have to worry about it. OK. Mm -hmm. And that goes into understanding the, I call it the impetus of roll. And we'll talk about that at the end because there are two ways to make an object roll. So there's two ways for an object to roll, slip versus no slip. And then there are two, two ways to make an object roll, which is um, translation versus moment. And so in combination, there could be four different ways to cause to, for roll to happen. There could be translation with slip, translation with no slip, rotation with slip, and rotation with no slip. And so that's four, those are the four different types of rolling motion problems that you can get. We're not going to talk too much more about that because I'm going to start to lose you. So, bam, we're going to put our kinetic diagram up. Notice my kinetic diagram is just a block. I'm going to put the, I shouldn't probably put it there. I should probably put a little bit more to the side right there. And I'm going to know that this guy is going to move mass times acceleration. And then I'm going to assume that uh, we have an I alpha. I know that I alpha equals zero, though, because it's not rotating around itself. Okay. All right. Dope. So all we have to do is do our uh, x and y equations. The x equation, going to be like this. The x equation is just going to say, um, actually, let me rotate the x. I don't want the x to be like that. I'll make the x positive like this. Let's save myself a part, the trouble of the negatives. So it'll be like that. All right, dope. So now I can say it'll be 300 and it'll be cosine of 30. And that comes from this guy. That's my p. And then that's actually equal to mass times acceleration, which means that acceleration is just going to be five times the cosine of 30, which is 4.33. That worked out so easily. That worked out like stupidly easy. I'm actually concerned at how easy that worked out. I'm actually going to come back to that a little bit later to make sure that I did it right because that sometimes it is a little bit too easy. Sometimes it does. Sometimes I also say it can't be that easy. Normally you shouldn't do that, but sometimes I'm just like, there's no way. 
But so far, that's all I have. Does that make some sense? If I were to put the friction term in here, then I would have been like that. Um, and it would have been minus the force of friction. And then the question becomes, what is the force of friction? Does that make some sense? Mm -hmm. And they don't tell you anything about friction. So because of that, it would have been unsolvable. And that's why I said, don't worry about this. This would go into specifically looking at the wheels because we would have needed this to plug into the wheels to solve for it. You follow on me? Um, yeah, I mean, I so yeah, I, I'm following you. But <laughs> for friction force, could you follow? If you like needed to, couldn't you use it as like a its own variable? Like, does that make sense? Yeah, but the so thing is, for this equation, this was a was already our variable. So if it would have been friction mm -hmm. and a, friction is not going to pop up anymore in those. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so what happens is the only way to find, solve for friction is to start looking at the data of the wheel. You need the data of the wheel and take a look. They don't tell you how big the wheels are. If they would have told you the radius of the wheel or the diameter of the wheel, we would have been able to extend it and now start to solve for friction. Does that make some sense? Yeah. But mm -hmm. that ain't the case here, big dog. So let's keep on rolling with Y. With Y, we're going to have 300 sine of 30. Then we're going to have minus 600. That's going to be the weight. Plus in A, plus in B equals zero because it's not moving anywhere. And then for the moment, we're going to go about, so here's the thing. If you go about, I'm going to go about, um, oh, geez. I guess I'll go about G just because of the way that this is, um, the way that this is. Um, wouldn't, wouldn't, um, wouldn't the, uh, wouldn't 300 be negative? If you're doing plus N A plus N B. No, this 300 yeah. comes from this guy, which is positive. It's up. And then the rotationally, then they're going counterclockwise, right? Yes, they're going. Now, in the moment, these are going to be opposite to each other. But this is the Y. So we're talking about just up and okay. down. All right. Okay. So let's do, um, let's just do, let's pick, uh, I'm going to do B. I'm going to do IG about B. So I'll do Z about B. So now this right here is going to be my uh, focus. That's going to be where everybody's rotating because I want to show you something. So I'm going to put it right here because uh, you got You have to put that, put that right there on the kinetic diagram so that you can see that this guy is going to produce a moment based on the distance. So the kinetic, the resultant motion actually does produce its own rotation if you are off center. Does that make some sense? Mm -hmm. If I had used the center of mass, then if you use a center of mass, then obviously that creates no moment. But if you use anything that's not the center of mass, then please remember that um, this term will produce additional moment. So I'm going to go about B to show you that. So we're going to do um, hot damn. All right, we're going to do. Uh, OK, I got to break this bad boy up. So we're going to do an up and we're going to do to the right. So first, we're going to do this segment right here, which would be 300 sine. It is 0.3 plus 0.2. That's going to be point. No, hold on. 0.08 plus 0.3 plus 0.2. You see that? So 0.58. So it'd be 0.58 away. So it's going to be 300 sine 30 times 0.58. And that's going to be positive. Then we're going to do... Um, minus, and it's going to be 300 cosine, and that's going to give me the 0.4, because that's this length right there, so it'll be 0.4, so cosine of 30, and then that'll be times by 0.4. You following me? Because I'm going quick now. Yeah, yeah, I'm following. Great. All right, so we got that. Then we're going to have, uh, we'll do the A. So A will be uh, NA. It's going to be positive. And that's going to be 0.5. And then we're going to do the G, which would be negative. So it'll be mass times gravity, which is 600. And that's going to be a distance of 0.2. And then that's all because the NB, this term is going to give me zero because that's the point. That's going through the point. It's going to give me zero. So that's got all equal. I times alpha. Now, I times alpha is zero. But this guy is going to produce a value for the, for the, on the right side. Does that make some sense? Mm -hmm. And that's because 
he's off the center. The center is no longer G. The center is B. He's not on center. And so because of that, he's going to create moment, which is so important. And this is going to happen from time to time. And so I'm forcing it to happen with this equation. Could I have done it with G? Of course I could have done it with G, but you would have had equal to zero. I want you to see how this works. And so I'm forcing it around B. It doesn't matter which point. It doesn't matter if I pick B, A, or G. They're all going to work out. So I'm going to go minus, and that's going to be MA, and that's going to be times by uh, 0.3. Do you see how I created that? And that's going to be, kinet I call it kinetic moment because it comes from the kinetic diagram. You're not going to hear that term in the book. You're just going to see them do it. But I call it kinetic moment because it comes from the kinetic diagram. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. Kinetic awesome. moment. And so now we know MA, we know A, we plug that right there. I need a blue marker. You plug that right there. And now look, everything solves out for NA. It's one equation for NA. Cool? Mm -hmm. And so, of course, if you do it with B, you get one equation for NA. If you do it with A, you're going to get one equation for, um, let's do the same exact thing. You do blah, 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 and then have an NB in it. Blah, 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 blah. You see, how, you see what happens there? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you do it about G, guess what's going to happen? You're going to have blah, 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 NA, blah, 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 NB, blah, blah, blah. And so what happens is you would have one, one, two equations, two unknowns. You'd have to solve these together. And so it really is a matter of preference. Do you do Y and about G to get the two equations to unknowns? Do you just do it about B to solve for A and then plug back in? Or do you just do for A to solve for B and then plug back in? Either way, any of these three equations that we're talking about right here, any of these three equations are going to work. But you can only do one of those three. Does that make some sense? Yes. And so uh, that's all of that without me actually solving with that and doing all the hard work. I just kind of wanted to show you where the brain was going. All right, so with that being said, you can get NA and that's gonna equal negative mass times acceleration mass is gonna be 50, so it'd be 50 times by uh, 4.33 times by 0.3. That's gonna be divided by, you're gonna have- um, 54. Not divided, by, excuse me. The 50 is the mass. The mass is 60 and it's 60. Never mind. 60. And then you're going to have a plus 600 times 0.2 plus 300 cosine 30 times 0.4 minus 300 sine of 30. And then it'd be times 0.58. All of that divided by, well, you know what? I'll just say all of it times two because that's what happens when you do the 0.5 times two. 0.5 divided by 0.5 is the same thing as times two. You following me? Yep. And that's gonna be some number and I'm not gonna solve it because I see, I, I have a strong feeling that you understand it. Cool? Yep. Dope. And you would do the exact same thing for B. So if you have NA here, you just back pull, black, back plug for B. For Y, find it. Or you could just do another moment equation, but focused around A, and then get another mess of a thing here, and then it would solve for B on its own. Make some sense? Yeah. Easy work. Any questions?